Hey guys, it's Poopers God here, and today I'm going to be showing you uh, the game that I'm making. Um, it is a top-down RPG, and I'm making it here in Stencil. Um, if you guys don't know what Stencil is, it is a very good, uh, it's sort of like the UDK, if you know what that is, but for Flash games. Um, <laughs> That's sort of a, a bad explanation. I mean, it's a good one, but UDK is so much better and more complicated. But, um, the... I'll be going over a review of Stencil here, uh, probably in the near future, if you guys want to check that out. Uh, right now, uh, I'm going to be going over sort of what I've done to make this game so far, and I'm going to be taking you guys along the ride, along for the ride, the rest of the way. Um... I might not do everything here live uh, and record everything that I'm doing. Cause I'm going to have hours and hours of footage if I do that. You guys aren't going to want to watch it. So, basically what we're going to do is I'm going to go through what I have so far um, with everything. Um, and if you guys want to use any of the tools that I've created, uh, so far I have one here that I've created all by myself. Um, directional sword attack. Uh, work in progress, and this actually works. Um, it just it's not very graphically pre pleasing at the moment. <laughs> you guys will see that when I show it to you. Um, and I will sort of show you so far what I have going. Um, let me close some of this shit here. Um, do. This is my uh, actual stuff here on the forge. If you guys want to take a look at it, that's the um, actual uh, thing. I've actually uploaded it to the forge, so you guys can take a look at it as well. Uh, the reason I created that, um, a lot of the stuff I'm going to be taking from the forge, uh, a lot of the behaviors and stuff like that, I did actually have to go ahead and create that one because there are no um, melee-based. Um, attacking behaviors for your character um, or any other you know enemy characters or anything like that any actor behaviors for melee especially for the top-down RPG uh, when it comes down to the top-down RPG it's very very much neglected um, when it comes to the behaviors and everything like that sorry if you guys hear the train in the background I live next to the railroads so um, I'm gonna be showing you so far what I have um, you guys can actually play this game if you want to as I'm updating it. Uh, I update it pretty regularly, a couple times a day sometimes. So if you guys go here to my website, uh, popusgod.com. Uh, most of this shit is just a bunch of crap. Um, but if you click on popusgod.swf, you guys will get this. And this is my game. And it's going to probably look different from the time you guys play it. So, this is the character. And you guys may or may not recognize this. Uh, let me turn my headset down one second. But uh, this is pretty similar. I haven't really messed around with this too much. Um, but this is the RPG dialogue example, basically, that you get from downloading um, Stencil. I did add quite a bit to it, like... Um, this house, oh, this, is, this house was here, he was here, and the well was here, and I added the pathing, uh, and a bunch of flowers in this extra house. But, you can go up and talk to this guy if you hit X on your keyboard, and he'll talk to you. I did write up some dialogue for him, um, and you can go, and this is supposed to be your house. I'm gonna add more to that later on. Once I get all of the behaviors and stuff written for everything that I need, you can go into his house, talk to his wife by hitting X again. Blah, blah, blah. Again, you guys, if you want to um, actually play this a little bit, there isn't a whole lot here yet. Um, you'll notice that when you first come in to the game, um, this little road will be blocked off. All you have to do is go into the house here, and leave and uh, that's also something that I need to work on is if you go into the house and then try to leave too quickly it'll actually break the game and you'll have to uh, start all the way over 
Um, I am going to be having a, a save feature here in the future as well. So like here the road is blocked off right when you first start and you can't go in there. So you go in the house. You, know, you can talk to her or whatever, leave the house. Come on, you can go into here. Now this is where I actually have the battle stuff put in. Um, X and Z aren't going to do anything for you. Right now I have it set up for you basically use the arrow keys to walk around. Uh, Z X to talk to people and then you use uh, WASD or WASD whichever which you want to call it uh, to actually do your attack. If you hit D he's going to attack to the right if you hit A he's going to attack to the left S attack down and W attack up um, yeah and um, as you can see it's a little buggy um, I am going to be working on that. And the other thing is, sometimes it'll go behind some of these tiles here. Again, I have to work on that as well. I pretty much just have to add a few more layers to my uh, to my game here, to my level anyway. This house is still broken. I might up that that soon. But that's pretty much the game so far. Um, let me go ahead and exit out of here. Again, you guys can play this. I'll put the link down below so you guys can just go down and click on it. And uh, it might look a little different because I'm going to be updating it pretty much as I put new things in. So this will probably get updated maybe at least once, maybe a couple times a day. So you guys take a look at it. Um, let's go back to the forge here. And I'll show you what I got going on. So basically, uh, if you guys have never used the forge before, um, you'll start out here once you actually go into the game and create a new one. Um, it's, I don't know exactly where it starts, but yeah. Basically, the way we got this is you can go in here and see. Basically, the way this works is you have your actors, which are going to be pretty much anything that is dynamic in your game is going to be an actor for the most part. Um, that includes, you know, enemies. It includes your weapons. It includes, you know, characters, NPCs, uh, dialogue boxes even, um, and arrows, stuff like that. Um, they're going to be your actors, the backgrounds, which I don't really use that. Um, fonts, for if you want any writing in the game, like for example, dialogue boxes, you can download fonts. And I'll show you how to download stuff in the stencil forge here in a second. Um, we have the scenes, which are going to be the, basically the different um, things that you actually level, the part of the levels that you see. And if you look at this, you'll have I have a ton of the same one. That's because I have my actor starting in a different area. Um, there's probably easier ways to do that, but I just did it this way because it's easier for me uh, to make. Um, and yeah. And then you have your logic, which is going to be any kind of behaviors. This is the actual, like, basically the coded part of the game. Um, I mean, it's all coded, but this is the part where everyone can go in and do coding and upload it to the forge. Um, and you can go in and download it, or you can and you can modify them pretty easily. Um, and your sounds, which you can go in. Um, I am going to have a tutorial up soon on how to, or I already have it up, I don't know. Um, on how to actually import sound, your own sound, into the actual game to use it. And of course, it's going to be, I'm going to be showing how to do 8 bit songs. Um, and it's really, really easy. Your tile sets, which is going to be like the actual parts of the level that you see. Uh, let me go into the scene here and I'll just open it up and show you. These are your tile parts, and you can, you know, take them and Okay, you can take them, and this is how you place them and stuff like that. I'm gonna take that out of there. I don't want, I don't want a bed in my level. Okay. If you ever do something wrong, you just don't save. Okay. And then from there, you can actually add packs. Um, Stints only downloaded comes with a bunch of stuff. Uh, controls. This is very important um, to mess around with this when you're going into making a game. Um, these are gonna be actual controls. Default is got all of these except for the walls on the bottom I added all of those um, and stuff like that uh, collision groups don't worry about that attributes don't worry about that um, 
you got your game settings, which is going to be like your title, which I still haven't changed, the size of the game, how zoomed in it is, uh, logo, I haven't changed any of this stuff. Uh, cancel. Um, advanced settings, I don't really know what that is. Um, loading screen, you can change this, make a new one, whatever you want to do, import libraries, don't really worry about that stuff. So, let me show you basically what I've added to this game. Um, so far, I haven't really made a whole lot here. Um, I did, you know, of course, download the swords here and I flipped them around. Pretty easy to edit. Um, you can do that just by double clicking on it. Click on the image and hit edit, and you can go in there and flip stuff. It's pretty easy. Uh, Stencil Forge. This is my download for the uh, thing that I wrote here using the uh, tools that Stencil gives you to write code. Um, this is going to be updated pretty often, probably more often than the actual, well, it'll probably be updated about the same amount of time as the game on the website, um, if you guys want to take a look at it. Um, and this will give you, you know, everything you need to know, uh, what version I'm on, or what version I have released at the moment, uh, where you can play the game, uh, description, uh, any bugs that I know of, um, and things that I'm going to add to the game. And I really, really, really want your guys' input um, on this kind of stuff. Uh, it'll help me make it better for you guys. Um, it'll help me make my game better. Um, it'll just make everyone happy, and, and yeah. Happy thoughts of goodness. And let me show you uh, guys, if you don't know sort of the way this all works. It's going to look really confusing at first, but um, hopefully we can, you know, over time, I can get you guys more used to it um, and stuff like that. And you guys can get more used to it and everything, and it'll be a lot better. So basically to download stuff in the Stencil Forge, um, you just go into it, click on it click download pretty easy and it'll automatically download it into the area that it needs to be in and uh, it'll pop up for you um, and everything too so it's pretty easy um, let's go in and I will show you exactly what uh, I coded what it looks like um, deep down on the inside okay that's not the right one that's the uh, original version before I did some updates to it. Okay, here we go. Um, right here. You can edit any of these just by double clicking on them, and you can go in and look at them. Um, it's pretty simple. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know why this is not already. But basically, um, I know this looks kind of confusing. Um, it may look familiar to you if you've used the program before. I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, but this isn't this isn't something uh, that was built by Stencil. They took it from someone else. Um, it's actually kind of old, um, but it is very, very helpful for people that um, don't like looking at this. <laughs> um, basically, what we got here, um, we have four events or four things that are going to happen with this code. Uh, those four things are the four different directional attacking things. I'm also going to, in the future, make it so that it automatically attacks with whichever direction you're pointing at. I'm probably going to leave, make two versions of it and have one like this and one like the other one, just depending on what you want. Um, it's all up to you guys what you want to use. Um, but, basically, let me read it through this for you so that it, I can kind of uh, explain everything that's in here. Um, first off, when happens, let me go ahead and actually add an event here. When updating, okay. No, that's, that's not it. Basically, you have when happening, and it's gonna have like a little. It's gonna look like that when you first put it in. 
Um, this here is something that I added uh, to it. Basically, this tells you when this is happening, do all of this code here. Pretty simple. Basically, the game's just going to wait for whatever this is to happen, um, and then it's going to run all the code underneath it. Um, and to get what this is, if you go, you're going to start out, it's going to look like this. This is your palette. This is what you basically add on to stuff with. Um, this is how you throw it away. <laughs> um, and then your attributes, which is the stuff that you've made, um, or stuff that you're going to need basically these are all the user inputted stuff so let me show you exactly what that is Computer actor types no uh, this one right here um, this is your actor this is the character the one that I fight with um, basically all that stuff that I just showed you on there um, is gonna be all of this stuff all the stuff that you need to put in um, all the variables that you need to put in for the code to work. Um, the sound that you play, for example, is going to be sound to play. And, yeah. So, trigger up attack. What the fuck is that? Let's go here and t -t 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 copy player. Trigger. Was it? Was it up? Trigger up attack, okay. Trigger up attack, W fire. Okay, that doesn't make any sense either. Basically, what this is, is um, it's, this uses, you can't use my code that I wrote without using uh, this behavior as well, do on key press. Um, this one right here actually comes with um, the action pack. So if you go to Stential Forge, just go to home, and search for action pack. No, action packle. Action pack. Um, action pack. Is this right here? I think this is it. Yes. If you download this, it'll come with that program there. Or the, not the program, sorry. Um, I guess it could be a program. But yeah. That, it'll come with that behavior that you need in order for this to work. So basically, W fire. W fire. The reason I named it W fire is because I use W on my keyboard for that action. Again, you're going to need to set that up in controls and uh, just key W, and you can name it whatever the hell you want. Um, yeah. So that's what that is. W fire. Basically, um, your character is going to attack upwards in upwards motion or direction every time this command is is uh, played and how you get that command to play is through this um, this is action to perform four, it's, this is the fourth one that doesn't mean anything and that, can, that just joined up with key number four and this is attack up, that's just the name that I gave W on my keyboard if you look at it W on my keyboard attack up so basically um, yeah basically what this means is every time I hit W which is attack up it's gonna use it's gonna use this command to put this command into the game which is W fire and then this um, my behavior is gonna read whenever that W fire is um, whenever that W fire command shows up and then it's going to basically um, perform that attack in the top direction or upper direction so that's basically what this is <laughs> that was a very long explanation alright and then this here um, right here if blah 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 reload equals zero okay that doesn't make any sense yet but basically the reason I did this this is joined up with this set reload to zero and set reload to one what this basically does um, now 
The reason I did it this way is because you're not going to attack with multiple swords if you only have one. I, that doesn't make any sense right now. But if I were to not have this, basically what would happen is you could just spam the attack button which in whichever direction, it doesn't matter. Um, you could just spam it and it would keep spawning more and more swords into the level. Um, and it wouldn't kill them or take... the sword wouldn't disappear as fast as you would be creating them so you would have multiple swords on top of each other and you would actually lay them out in a line if you were running really fast <laughs> or something so the reason I have this is so that you can't create more than one sword in front of you at a time and basically if that doesn't make any sense to you basically the way this program or this behavior works is it spawns a sword in front of you whenever you're attacking. It's basically the way it works. So, and it just stops it from happening. And then we have create recycled spawn sword north. Uh, so basically what this means is this is actually creating, this is spawning in that sword. Um, and sword north is just the name of which sword. So I have S sword, which is going to be sword south or whatever. This is the actual sword it's it's putting in. Um, the reason it's called Sword North on the other one is because it's a um, it's one of these attributes. And the attributes are things that you created just like the other thing that I made. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's go back. Sword North, so yeah. At X center of self. Okay, that doesn't make any sense either. So what this is um, X center of self. Now self is going to be whatever actor is you have this behavior attached to. So self is going to be um, your character. Self is going to be your character. So um, X center of your character. So X center, if you guys know anything about um, like you were in algebra you'll understand this pretty quickly but um, on let me go to open up a scene just to give you an example um, basically everything on this screen is coordinated um, with a X which is your left and right axis um, and your Y axis which is your up and down um, and what this is saying is it wants you to spawn that sword um, right in the center of the character according to the left and right um, coordinates of that character and it's going to take 15 away from that and 15 is the reason I have this in minus 15 is because it doesn't actually spawn it correctly it uses the um, this is actually the very top left corner I believe very top left corner of what it spawned and then it spawns it in that section so it's a little off of what you think it would be it doesn't the coordinates is according to the top left corner of an object that you're spawning in rather than the center of that object so that's why it's at negative 15, just to bring it in a little bit so that it's not like way off to the side of the character. And this is pretty much the same thing, it's the center of the y-axis of your character. Um, so it's going to be, so if you were to have the center of the x and the center of the y, it would be directly in the center of the character. And then these just modify how far, this one is how far up and down, this one's how far left and right. And this one here, at back. It's three options, at back, at middle, at front. What this basically is, if you select back, it's going to spawn it behind the character. Um, so for example, I'm facing uh, forward, and if I'm holding a sword, it's going to be between... Okay, let's say I'm the, um, I'm the character, and I'm attacking north, or attacking up. Um, if you look at the level here, if someone's facing up, and they're holding a sword in their hand in front of them, 
they're gonna be the sword is gonna be in between you and or in between them and the ground so you can't see the sword if they're holding it in front of them um, if they're facing up so basically the reason I have that there is so that you so that the character blocks out part of whatever there is in front of them. the character blocks out part of the sword basically middle I haven't experimented with that yet and front which means it's on top of it so for example I'm put this back where it was for example for down if you're face down, just like in the picture here, the sword is going to be in front of the character, so you want it set to front, so that the sword spawns in front of the character. Pretty easy. Um, animation, attack S for self. Okay, let me explain that one next. Attack S is another attribute that I made, um, and that just lets the user input the animation for your character which is basically this animation exactly here because this is him attacking down because I just went to the other one um, so basically I just set it to let me open this up okay these are the animations this is the character facing down so if he's attacking down you're going to want him to face down because if he was like facing up or something and he was attacking down he'd be like attacking behind him and it wouldn't make very much sense that's basically what that does is it tells the game uh, which direction they're going to be facing or what animation they should use um, then I have set reload to one and this basically stops you from because I have if reload equals zero and now the reload is equal to one I can't use this attack again until the reload is set back to zero which is down here and I'll get to that later um, point last created actor towards direction of self in degrees. What the hell does that mean? Basically what that means is, um, how do I explain that? Um, I actually don't, I think I need this anymore. I don't know how to explain that. Um, and this is due after 0.1 seconds. This is kill last created actor. Um, basically what this does is after 0.1 seconds, um, it's going to take away or despawn the sword that you spawned in. And then after 0.2 seconds, it's going to set reload to zero so I can use this again. So basically what this is going to be is you're going to swing and then it's going, you're going to stop swinging and it's going to take you uh, 0.1 second to basically get into a position where you can swing again. That's pretty much how I can explain this. Um, and that's pretty much, pretty much all I have to show you guys so far. Um, the rest of these videos aren't going to be as long, of course, because uh, they're just going to be updates. And so far I've probably worked on this a total of maybe around... I'd like to say six hours or so just because I had to um, go through and I don't actually know flash uh, code or action scripting um, so I had to kind of go in there and learn a little bit just to see how to put that um, together correctly um, and then I went in and wrote it that's why I've spent so much time on it um, the level creation probably took me maybe a half hour altogether, maybe a little longer. Um, I just have some problems. Um, the collision in this game engine that Stencil uses um, isn't the best. Um, I really hope they update that soon because, for example, especially in the top-down games, like this one is, uh, there's a lot of collision errors um, in the game. So. Just as a heads up, it might not if you get some weird stuff going on where like people appear in different spots that they actually are and you're running into invisible walls and all kinds of garbage. Don't be mad at yourself for breaking it because it's probably the game engine. Um, you can go bitch at stencil for that one.
and I think that's pretty much all I have to show you guys. Um, I will see you around, and have a good one.